There is no charge for awesomeness. Hi everybody, it's Guru Bob, and I'd like to welcome you all to this year's 30 day challenge. This video is going to be a bit of an introduction to the concept of market and keyword research, how it relates to uh, marketing on the internet. It's principally focused towards beginners. So those of you that feel that you already have a, a good strong understanding of that, then feel free to skip this video and move on to the next video on the market samurai. But I am hoping that um, even some of the more advanced people out there might, might uh, uh, benefit from some of the clarification that, uh, that, that I'm going to offer it through, you know, throughout this video. What is a market? To me, a market is a segment of the population that have a common need or desire. Put simply, a group of people that, um, that need something. They have to have the wherewithal to buy, the capacity to buy, preferably that means that they've got access to credit card facilities. And they need to be motivated to acquire something, a commodity or a service, that meets or solves that need or desire that they have. Often people like to define segments in terms of niches. And to me, a niche is, is indeed just that, effectively a segment of a market. For example, if we think of the very, very general market of golf, within that market there is a, a, a segment of people that are just interested in golf clubs. And within the golf club segment, there's a segment of people that are just interested in irons. And yet within that even smaller segment or niche, there are people that are just interested in a specific type of iron known as a cavity backed iron. And at that level, at that level of specificity, I would call that a micro niche. So, my premise here is that on the internet, market and keyword research are synonymous. They are in effect the same thing. And this is because on the internet, People that have a common need or desire can be defined in terms of the keywords that they enter into the search engines as they go about looking for the commodity or service that actually meets that need or desire. And this is what's so wonderful about the internet. We can actually target people that have a specific need by focusing on the keywords that, um, that they tend to enter to define that need. Whereas in the offline world, it's much harder to target a specific market. And we have to sort of look at things like um, buying habits or salary or age or where they live. On the internet, we can be much more specific. But not all keywords are equal. Some keywords have a lot more traffic than others. And also some keywords have a lot more competing web pages. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, uh, for some keywords, like the word golf, there are millions and millions of, of web pages have, that have the word golf on it somewhere. But for a, a keyword like cavity backed irons, there are much fewer number of pages that have that specific phrase on them. Now, our interest, of course, as internet marketers, is to find keywords that have a commercial value. And by that I mean is that if you've got a group of people that have a common need or desire, and they're looking to buy something, then it's probably they're going to be using a certain, certain types of keywords. And that's going to be more indicative of the fact that they're interested in buying. Some people that are searching for free content and that use the word free as modifiers in their keyword searches, they might perhaps, they might perhaps be less interested in buying something. So we, we need to think in terms of um, the possible commercial value of a keyword. So our goal is to find keywords that are used by a large enough group of people that are willing to buy a product that relate to a keyword or market that they are searching for and for which there is an acceptable level of web page competition. Keywords have a hierarchy and that hierarchy can be defined in terms of their traffic and or competition potential. I'm going to be sort of p pursuing the sort of the hierarchy in terms of the, co the, the web page competition potential. 
And uh, these numbers here are defined in terms of phrase match. But in order to be able to, um, uh, to help you understand what I mean by that, let's go over to the search engines and define that more, more carefully. This is the home page of Google. As you can see, there's very little on the home page of Google other than a bit of branding and some links through to functionality that Google offer to us. You see, Google understands that until the user um, enters something which is indicative of their interest, then Google can't return anything of any value to them. So Google here is waiting for us to actually start our search by entering a keyword or key phrase that's indicative of what we're interested in. Having entered that keyword, and this is an example of um, a search based on the keyword golf, Google then does its very best to give us links to websites that it believes are highly relevant to that keyword and also advertisements that are also relevant on the right hand side of Google here that are also relevant to that keyword. Now this search, golf, returns six, Google's telling us there are 613 million competing pages. And for us, that is um, far, far too competitive. We could never hope to, uh, to rank for the keyword golf in the short term and possibly, you know, unless we've got um, a considerable amount of expertise and money to spend on optimizing, it's unlikely we'll ever be able to rank for that phrase. It's just far too competitive. If we enter the phrase golf clubs, then Google tells us now there's only 11.3 million competing pages that have the words golf and or clubs somewhere on the page, but not necessarily together. This is known as a broad match search. Now, in order for us to find out how many pages there are where the words golf and clubs are on the page together in that order, we need to do a phrase match search. And we do a phrase match search by placing our, our keyword search within, in, within quotes. And Google tells us that there are 11.1 .1 million competing pages that have the phrase golf clubs um, on the page somewhere. Now what's interesting about the, the difference between the broad and the phrase match search returns here is that they're very similar. I mean, one was 11.3 million, the other was 11.1. And what that's telling us is that in the main, if people are going to use the words golf and clubs on a page somewhere, then more often than not they're going to be together in the phrase golf clubs. That's not always the true, true, however. Now, if we look at the phrase cavity-backed irons, now in broad match terms, Google tells us there are now only 361,000 pages. And that's 361,000 pages that have the words cavity and backed and iron somewhere on the page, but not necessarily together. To find out how many pages are specifically optimized for the phrase cavity backed irons in that order, we put that, that key, key phrase in, in, uh, in quotes and click enter. And now Google tells us that there are only 2,360 pages. That, are, that, that contain the phrase cavity-backed irons, where the words are in that specific order. So that's what I mean by a phrase match search. And why that phrase match search and filter ultimately is important to us is that if we do have a page which is optimized for the phrase cavity-backed irons, then subject to authority, which we'll discuss a little bit later in the challenge, that Google with will give preference in the broad match searches, i.e. without quotes, to pages that are optimized in phrase match form for, that, for, for the keyword phrase of interest. So we, we, we can use the phrase match searches to get a sense of how many other websites are specifically optimized, optimized to the phrase that we might be interested in. So back to our, um, our keyword hierarchy in terms of competing pages, um, I define uh, keywords that have more than a million competing pages phrase matched as market keywords, uh, between 100 and 100,000 mega niche keywords, between 30,000 and 100,000 competing pages phrase match are niche keywords, and less than 30,000 pages competing pages phrase match as micro niche keywords. Now here in the 30 day challenge, our focus is in finding keywords that, that are micro niche keywords, 
preferably less than 30,000. If you're really interested in a particular market and you can't find any keywords that are less than 30,000 but, but you can between say 30 and 50,000, then you might be prepared to relax the filter to that level. But preferably really we want to be finding keywords with less than 30,000 competing pages. Now of course our web page competition is only one major criteria. The other major criteria is traffic. And we want to be able to find keywords that have um, preferably more than 80 to 100 searches a day. So um, that's, our, that's our initial goal here. And uh, last year and uh, in previous years, the process of finding those keywords that had you know, sufficient traffic and sufficient web page competition was a largely hit and miss affair and very, very definitely a manual process. You just had to go and do lots of manual searches to find this. Um, this year we've developed a tool in combination with Alliance Software called the Market Samurai. And in the next video I'll be showing you um, how to do this sort of assessment, drilling down to find these sorts of keywords using Market Samurai and you'll see how easy it is using this tool to be able to find keywords that meet our traffic and competition criteria. But before I complete this video, I want you to give I want to give a little bit of a, an understanding for you in terms of how the market samurai you know works and how the market samurai can be used to assess the keyword hierarchy that I've been talking about in this video. Market samurai interfaces with the Google external keyword tool which which basically returns a list of related keywords that relate to our initial keyword search. So if we were to enter golf into Market Samurai, you'd get back you know, hundreds of keywords that are all de determined to be related to the, to the starting phrase golf, one of which of those keywords would be the phrase golf clubs. So golf clubs sits within the keyword cloud that's associated with our starting keyword golf. Now, Unfortunately, the most of the keywords that will come back from that keyword search are going to be very general, many, many, many one-word keyword returns, and whilst they're going to have lots of traffic associated with them, they're all, going to be, they're all going to be very, very competitive. So whilst we might use the Market Samurai tool to get a sense of what some of the, the, you know, the mega, and, mega and niche keywords are within the golf market, we're not going to analyze the competition potential of those niche keywords using Market Samurai. We're just going to get an idea. But what we can do is then having identified a niche or mega niche keyword that might be interesting to us, a, a sub-segment of our sort of broader market, we'll then reuse Market Samurai to assess that particular niche keyword in the case of here of golf clubs. And, um, and then the, the keyword cloud that gets returned by Market, market Samurai i.e. the related keywords, are going to be entirely different if our starting keyword is golf clubs than if our starting keyword is golf. But the related keywords that come back in relation to golf clubs are going to be much more relevant to that specific phrase than, 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 the, than the golf search would be. And similarly, when we get down to the, to the micro niche keyword level, we can even use Market Samurai to do searches on our specific micro niche keyword phrase as well. And we will be doing that later in the challenge when we're looking for more uh, keywords that we can sort of um, publish content on um, at, when we want to broaden out our exposure to a particular micro niche. In the next video, you'll see me using Market Samurai to drill down uh, through a market into, in, into the, uh, a micro niche area. And I want you to take very careful note of how I do that because um, if you do that in the way that I explain in the video, you're not going to have any problems at all with Market Samurai. But if you restrict your searches to be too general, then not only are you not going to be able to find keywords that are going to meet your traffic and, and page competition criteria, but you also run the risk of getting, um, getting yourself banned from being able to do Google, Google searches. Now don't be too concerned about that, even if you do sort of find yourself having a temporary ban, um, initially that will only sort of last for a sort of limited period of time. But the best way of using Market Samurai is to use it in such a way where you don't get banned at all. And uh, in the next video I'll be explaining how to do that.
All right, well, that's the, uh, that's the end of this introduction on market and keyword research uh, with respect to internet marketing. I hope you learned something um, and that has increased your understanding of, um, of what we're trying to achieve here in terms of finding a keyword in relation to your niche idea that you, um, that you, that you found on day one. Uh, so I'm going to end this now and I look forward to seeing you again when I talk about Market Samurai. There is no charge for awesomeness.